Hi, my name is Alon Rubin. I'm here with Reverb at King Size Studios in Los Angeles. We're going to be taking a look at my second favorite drummer of all time, Mr. Stuart Copeland. And uh, before we actually dig into a lesson, let's talk some gear. Q Drum Co. Galvanized Steel, 13, 16, 24. A bunch of uh, Zildjian Evita cymbals, and here's a special one that it was a gift. They don't make it anymore, so I just I don't even want to go there. Okay, if I break it, it's the last one, and I'm not going to get over it. Remo heads, DW Hardware, Vader sticks. Okay, let's talk some Stuart Copeland. Went through many, many, many Copeland phases throughout my life. He's a huge favorite of mine. I love the police, one of my top five favorites. And um, what is synonymous with Stuart Copeland's playing, I think would be two things, hi-hat stuff and ride stuff. So I'm gonna do two lessons. First things first, hi-hat, okay? Rather than teaching a specific part, I figured it would be better to kind of give you Stuart Copeland building blocks, if you will. I like to think of Stuart Copeland as a very ADD drummer in the sense that he would always change what he played from bar to bar, and you could hear that even more so on the live recordings. I obsessed over Police Live discs one and two. I've collected every possible live recording they had. I mean, I really dug in there. And I would kind of find these patterns or kind of building blocks that he would use in his playing. So let's focus on the hi-hat. Uh, as boring as it may sound, I'm gonna keep quarter notes on the bass drum, which is something that he would do very often, but just for the sake of keeping time and uh, knowing where these accents kind of land and coming out of the beat, I'm gonna keep quarter notes. So very first thing, everyone's heard it at the top of one of their most popular songs, Roxanne. This isn't a Roxanne tutorial, but this rhythm he would use constantly, whether it would be counting off a song, waiting for the other two to join. Anyway, let's start at about this tempo, so. Super easy, of course, anybody can do it. But that accent uh, starts playing into other things that he would do. So you can play like that, or he would often open the hi-hat on that. And you know what, I'm gonna go ahead and bring the old hi-hats down here, because he played 13s, I believe, very, very close and sizzly. We were doing some bottom lessons, and uh, those were wide. So let's do the exact opposite here with Stuart Copeland. All right, so same exact thing, but I'm gonna open the hi-hat. All right, very easy. Next thing, slightly more difficult, not difficult at all. We're gonna do this uh, rhythm where we're doing two 16th notes followed by an eighth note, very easy. You can also take that rhythm and start playing it in different places. It doesn't have to be at the end of the bar. You can hear something like that and say the intro of driven to tears, right? So play around with where you're placing these things. Okay, and as you just heard, I kind of mixed the two things by having that hi-hat opening. Like I said, very crucial accent in the Stuart Copeland repertoire. Okay, next thing, using a bit of drummer jargon, we'll call it a four stroke rough, okay? That is. The one is the last note, okay? So these three notes precede it. One, one, okay? So let's add that, so. Okay, if you wanna play that um, with doubling up on one hand and playing it that way as opposed to singles, I'm not gonna mind. I think Copeland did that quite a bit actually traditional grip, grip player, you kind of see him do that sort of thing. So that would sound something like this. I like to alter between the two. So same thing, take that and play around with where you place that in the bar, butt it up against one another and see what you get, some results like this. Okay, so just to recap, these three very basic rhythms, let's kind of put them together and play around with them. You get something like this. Already getting in very Copelandy territory, okay? So 
With the fourth one, we're going to start introducing these triplets that go from the end of a bar into another. You'll be able to place it wherever you want. But I'm going to play it out of this four-stroke rough thing that we're playing. OK, so take a listen. Right? All of these things that I just played for you are in the intro of Driven to Tears. So go ahead and listen to that. And that's what I mean. These building blocks would be all over the place. If you asked Sir Copeland to play that exact same intro for you right now, he wouldn't have been able to do it. He w wouldn't be able to do it, let alone right after the track because that's just the way he played. It would come to him, he would do it. Halfway through a bar, he'd already be thinking about what he was doing at his next bar. At least I think that's how his playing actually sounds and that's what I love about that, okay? So, I'm gonna go ahead and take those four things and play them for you and then we're gonna take it another step further, okay? So here we go. Very Copeland-esque, right? Okay, so let's actually make a beat out of it, okay? Very Copeland-ish, okay? Another thing, let's go into more of that, um, I don't need, uh, dare I say traditional reggae rhythm. What I mean by that is inverting it and having the bass drum land on two and four. That's the way I've always viewed it. I've heard Stuart Copeland refer to it as landing on the three. If you're confused, what I mean by that is the following. People like to explain the reggae rhythm as far as drums are concerned by saying that everything's backwards. The snare lands where the bass drum would typically land and vice versa, okay? So, let's start at the one and you'll see the way I count it, and I think the way most people count it, is that the bass drum will land on two and four. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Copeland would look at it as landing on a three. One, two, three, four, one, two, Up to you, doesn't matter. Just giving you two ways of looking at it. I view it as landing on two and four, which would be the exact opposite of what you would typically play, right? One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay, so everything I just showed you, let's do the same thing where the hi-hat is gonna be the lead instrument, but my kick is gonna land on the three with the snare. I'm gonna start very simply, and then um, kind of reintroduce those four things I just taught you, so. All right, so as you could have uh, heard there, I started from the very basic straight eighth notes with the accent, brought in the little 16ths, four stroke rough, and then that four stroke rough into the triplet, okay? So as a little bonus, since we're already cross sticking, uh, another Stuart Colbin signature, and the very basic building block of the whole cross sticking thing would be this thing called three over two. And what that means is this following rhythm. For every three strokes that I'm hitting on the hi-hat, I'm hitting two, so. So there's a polyrhythm there. And when you play that over having the quarter notes on the bass drum, you get this sort of thing. Okay, so you'll hear that all over the place. Let's say in the bridge of can't stand losing you when you have those nice little chorusy harmonic things going on with Andy Summers and uh, Sting thumping away on the bass. You get this sort of. All right, so 
adding a little more spice to that, rather than adhering to the three over two, okay, we're going to fill in all the in-between notes between the cross sticking. What I mean by that is rather than going Doesn't sound very interesting like that, but when you play it over the top of straight chord notes on the bass drum, I'll start with the regular three over two and then go into what I just explained, so. Kind of get that regatta de blanc sort of thing. So one more time. Let's slow that down, because it sounds a lot fancier than it actually is. It's literally over and over and so. All right, so let's put all of that together and we are gonna get Copeland, okay? So there you have Stuart Copeland. Hopefully uh, you got the feel of those building blocks, but by all means, I encourage you to take those, flip them upside down, turn them inside out, do whatever you want to them. I'm pretty sure that's how Copeland stumbled across all this stuff himself. So uh, good luck and we'll get to some ride stuff next time around. Thank you. <laughs>